Hello, welcome to the background lecture for lab assignment 8. The related lecture material is in lectures 21 through 23. The written material is sections 2.5 through 2.5.5. The basic subject matter for this lab assignment is second order electrical circuits. Our specific goals are going to be relative to building, testing, and analyzing second order, order circuits. And I want to emphasize at this point that the actual test data and the circuit building will probably not take you very long in this lab assignment. Probably most of your effort is going to be expended analyzing the circuit before the lab and comparing the data that you acquire with the analysis after the lab. In part one, we'll build and test an underdamped series RLC circuit. In part two, we'll take essentially the same series RLC circuit, but we will redesign it so that the circuit is critically damped. We'll essentially change the value of the resistor, then we'll test the circuit with that resistance and see whether it matches our expectations as far as critically damped systems. In part three, we'll analyze and test another second order circuit which is slightly more general than the simple series RLC circuit that we looked at in parts one and two. As I mentioned previously, the lab emphasizes analysis of second order circuits. So expect to do the pre-labs before you take the test data. Expect to spend some time on the pre-labs and analyzing the circuits. We'll ask you to wire up the circuits that you analyzed or designed in the pre-lab and test them. Then after you've done your testing, we'll want you to compare your analytical expectations with the test data that you acquired. This is really important. We want to get you used to reviewing data and comparing it to your expectations. And in fact, in general, the data will not necessarily match your expectations. We will also expect you to come up with some reasons why the data and the analysis may not match very well. In part one of lab eight, we'll take a look at the step response of a series RLC circuit. And in fact, this circuit will turn out to be under damped. What we'll do is analyze the circuit to estimate the damping ratio, the natural frequency, the damped natural frequency, the DC gain, the rise time, and the overshoot. Then we'll construct the circuit and measure those same parameters or estimate those parameters from the measurements that we make. We'll want to compare our measured parameters with our expectations relative to the analysis. Comparing data and analysis is very important. You should expect to do that throughout your career. This is our main opportunity for trying to check that one against the other. I'll now show you the circuit that I built to do part one of this lab assignment and demonstrate its operation. We have a simple RLC series combination I'm applying power to the resistor with channel one of the arbitrary waveform generator. I've grounded this terminal of the capacitor. I'm using channel one of my oscilloscope to measure the input to the circuit, the channel one of the arbitrary waveform generator. I'm using channel two of the oscilloscope to measure the voltage across the capacitor. Now let's take a look at the waveform software, measure the response of the circuit. On my arbitrary waveform generator, I'm going to choose a fairly low frequency square wave as my input to emulate a step input to this RLC circuit. So I've chosen rather arbitrarily 100 hertz. Uh, let's go ahead and stick with 2.5 volts amplitude. I will offset this by 2.5 volts just for fun. So this will start at 0 volts and go up to 5 volts. Now, looking at the response of the circuit on the oscilloscope, there we go. I need to set a trigger. At the moment, my trigger mode is none. Okay, the trigger tells the oscilloscope when essentially to start acquiring data. It's an event that tells me when time t equals zero is. I'll do normal triggering. The source is channel one. It will be a rising condition and the level is 2 volts. So when channel 1, which is my orange line, passes 2 volts on the way up, that will be essentially my trigger point here where time is essentially 0. So the orange channel is my input. The blue channel is my output. From this output measured response, I can measure an overshoot from which I can estimate a damping ratio. I can measure a frequency or a time period 
of these signals, I'd probably want to use a slightly larger time scale to measure this period, which will give me an estimate of my damped natural frequency. And I can also measure a rise time, which should give me an estimate of my undamped natural frequency. Then I can compare that with my analytical results, see whether I have an appreciable amount of error, and whether I can attribute that error to some shortcoming in my analysis. In part two, we're going to look at essentially the same series RLC circuit that we looked at in part one. However, in part two, we're going to assume that the resistance value is our choice. We get to decide what resistance we want to put into this circuit, and our design goal is to make the circuit critically damped. Now we're going to choose the same natural frequency and DC gain as the circuit of part one, which should give you a good heads up as to what the inductance of the capacitance for this circuit should be. After you've determined what value of resistance to use, you should build and test the circuit, compare your measurements with what you expect, what you know of critically damped circuits, make some justifications as to whether the measured data match your expectations, and if not, why. Now in our analysis, we'll find out that the value of resistance controls the damping ratio of this circuit. So what I'm going to do for this demo is simply change out the values of the resistance in this circuit and see how that qualitatively affects the shape of the response. I'm not going to try to design a critically damped circuit here. That's your job in the lab assignment. Now this is our original resistance value of about 1.1 ohm. We're getting a lot of overshoot in our response. By increasing this resistance value, we can reduce the amount of overshoot that we see. If I use a 10 ohm resistor, for example, we've significantly reduced the overshoot in our response. As we keep increasing this resistance value, that overshoot will get smaller and smaller until it finally disappears entirely. The 47 ohm resistor we see very little overshoot at all and by increasing the resistance more we can eliminate the overshoot entirely, make the circuit either critically damped or over damped. In part three of this lab assignment, we'll look at another second order circuit which appears to be somewhat more general than the series RLC circuit. We'll expect you to determine the input output differential equation for this circuit, estimate the damping ratio, the natural frequency, the damped natural frequency, the DC gain, the rise time, and the overshoot, then wire up this circuit, measure or estimate the same parameters from the test data, compare the results with your expectations, and provide at least one reason for why they may not match up. Now, the test procedure for this circuit is virtually identical to the previous sections. I won't do a demonstration of how to do this test data.